How's it guys? Welcome to Iconic TV. Today we're doing a performance comparison between the GTX 460 and the GTX 480. The GTX 460 is going to be an SLR or the GTX 480 is going to be a single card. Let's first have a look at the EVJ GTX 460 that we have here. We have the GTX 460 768 megabyte version, but it's the factory overclock one called the Superclocked. If you could come in a bit closer, um, it's got a 763 megahertz core clock and a one. Uh, 1,800 megahertz, sorry, I mean 3,800 megahertz memory clock, which is quite a jump from the 720 core clock and the 3,600 megahertz memory clock. So it's quite a nice, um, quite a nice upgrade. What's nice about this, what buying an O-factor overclock card is that you don't have to take the risk in overclocking the card yourself, and you don't have to avoid your warranty if you try to flash it or anything of that nature. So it's a nice option. The, these cards are retailing at the moment for 2,225 2, Rand. Um, so they, they're quite good cards for the value for the money. Now if we go along to this card here, the Rhino 3D GTX 480, um, it's 1.5 gigabytes of memory on this. And um, it's, it's actually the fastest single core car on the market right now. But it's not, we're still waiting for the 6,000 series to come out. So we never know yet, but as of now, it's still the fastest card that you money can buy. What we're going to do is a few benchmarks in these two to see which is the best value for money, and um, some overclocking as well. So let's have a look at our test bench when we're going to be doing that. This is our test bench, it's the Rampage 3 Extreme, and um, we've got some OCZ memory here, it's um, CL7, 1600, and um, 850 watt power supply, a Corsair 60 gigabyte solid state drive, and a Z600 uh, cooler master cooler and also i7-920 will be running at 4 gigahertz for all the tests we'll be doing as of now we're going to start uh, our first benchmarks with the GTX 460 in SLI so we're going to come back now with the 460s in SLI so we're back benchmarks. with the GTX 460 setup in SLI um, as you can see it's extremely good looking to look at set up in SLI these, these EVGA cards use the reference design, which means it's the design designed by NVIDIA. So it's not a custom design, but the cooling on these are actually very efficient, so you don't need to really worry about that. Um, if you could come and look at the PCI Express slots, I always use at least a one, uh, one PC lane, PCR lane gap between cards, just so the cooling here is not too excessive. So if you have a sound card that needs premium or any other card, I'd really recommend that you always keep a gap like this if you've been running SLI. Um, but if we can go along to the benchmark now, um, we're running the the Unijan benchmark, which is the DirectX 11 standard. It's the highest rated DirectX 11 benchmark. Actually, the only one out there right now. And um, it's full of tessellation of all the features of DirectX 11. But as you can see, the GTX 460 is running this smoothly. I mean, if you could look at those graphics and the shadow effects, it's amazing. It really is amazing. If we could have a look over here, you can see the GTX 460 is running at 100% stock here. Well, stock is according to the superclocked, the 763 and the, the 950. But you must take into account that you must always double clock that. So you must times that by 2 to give you the actual, the actual number, which will be 1800 gigahertz on the memory. The shade is running at 1526, so there's no overclocked as aside from the factory overclock from EVGA. Um, if we look at the processor, we're running at 4 gigahertz, like I discussed earlier before we started and everything is running smoothly so far. We're just waiting for the benchmark results and it should be coming up any moment now for the first benchmark. But these GTX 460s really are top performers and because it's the it's from the G GF104 series which is as opposed to the GTX 480 which uses the GF100 series it's quite a big jump in terms of of architecture on the cards. With the 460s overclock far better than the GTX 480. So, from my personal opinion, I would rather go for two of these as opposed to one powerhouse like that, just because the technology behind the GTX 460 is far better than the GTX 480. But if you want a powerhouse card, you don't have to rely on drivers, because not all drivers support um, SLI. So you might be playing a new game, and it might not support SLI at the time, so you'd be running that game only on one single card, which can be a real pain for some people, and I can understand that. So if you want a card that will run all games maxed out 100%, then yes, a GTX 480, as you can see, that a single core card is a better option. But, but NVIDIA is very good at their drivers, so you wouldn't actually need to worry about that too much. But, but that, is, that is the only problem with SLI. But it really is better value for money, and 
the GF one hundred four series is is the way to go. Now we're just starting the benchmark now. Let's have a look here if we could just come in a bit closer. We get about 50 FPS constant, which is very good for this benchmark. It's extremely intensive on the cards and the CPU right now. We could get a nice zoom in on those numbers there. We're even hitting high 60s here. Yeah, I mean, that's very impressive. And remember, this is no no overclocks as opposed to the factory overclocks. So this is extremely, extremely exciting to see. And um, if you if you are looking at buying GTX 460s, uh, you might want to wait for the 6000 series from AMD to come out. You might be able to pick them up a bit cheaper once those come out. And um, so maybe if you're in the market right now for God, maybe you just wait the extra one and a half months. And, um, but they've really dropped down in price quite considerably over the last two months. So, so if you're really in a bit of a waiting game right now, then why not um, just wait for it? We're just still waiting for this benchmark to finish, and um, it should be nearly done.